guys, Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have a tip for you on how to get more realistic sounding cymbals, especially for, I guess, more rock type tracks. I, I found that often it's hard to trigger cymbals that sound realistic, um, and I've experimented a lot with it. And finally, uh, this is sort of my tried and true method at this point. So I want to play you a little bit of this song, and then I'll talk about the techniques that we're using to get these symbols to sound better. Okay. Hey guys, it's Evan from Stock Music Musician. Just wanted to let you know that I've got a free sample pack download. There's a link down below. Go get those sounds. They're yours to do with whatever, whatever you want with. Enjoy them. All right, let's get back to the video. I've done about half of the things I want to do here, but I haven't done all of them. So I want to show you exactly how it works. So instead of triggering them uh, through like a Kong or an NXT, I find it much, much more effective to actually use wave files because you can time stretch them and fade them in and fade them out and pitch shift them independently and also volume uh, well you can do the volume with the NNX or Kong or something but um, what I like to do is I like to go to the symbols section of the drum supply and find some symbols that I like preferably two and drop them in one maybe a shorter sound and one a, a larger sound a, a longer sound um, and then what I imagine in my head is a drum kit, right? Usually a drummer will have a, a, like a crash on the left side and a crash on the right. So I take these two sounds, pan them to opposite sides. Um, let's look at the mixer here. So you see crash one and crash two are panned to the left and to the right. Uh, that gives a little more stereo separation and makes it just a little more realistic. Um, now, one of the most important things that I find is to actually stereo stretch the samples to sound as long as you want them to do. And you do that by holding, well, you don't want to do more than one at a time. So you'll do it by selecting it and holding down control and shift. And this stretches the waveform so that it will be longer or shorter and sound more realistic. So let's listen now. <laughs> That's after stretching this before. You hear how that's just a little short and even reverb isn't gonna fix that? So, um, just stretch them out a little bit longer. You can't go super far in either direction or they start to sound fake and processed, which is why you wanna start with a good initial set of cymbals. But once you have that, definitely feel comfortable stretching them longer or shorter. If the attack is too much, you can always use the fade in or fade out to just soften it. Then another thing I like to do um, is to adjust the volume a little bit so that be they don't all sound like they're being hit at the same volume. And another thing you can even do is transpose the occasional hit so that it sounds like the dr drummer's hitting it with a little more or different velocity. So let's, uh, on this one I've done a bit of a fade in, so let's listen now. Um, and so that can just add, over the course of a song, a whole other level of realism. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is reverb. Uh, I found that you need to use a fair amount of reverb to get snares to do what, or, I mean, cymbals to do what I want them to do. Um, which is to kind of just sit in the background and like, these are more signaling uh, symbols as opposed to like big, like I'm not trying to create realistic rock drums here. I'm trying to create um, production music. And so I want to signal energy and I want to signal that something's coming or that something just happened. But so it needs to, 
both exist, but it needs to not be super noticeable, and it needs to be realistic, but not super realistic. So take the room patch. Room patches are usually good. You could use send effects. I would normally use a send effect here, but because um, you want these pretty wet. So let's just listen to, we'll start from here. And I've only got it on the first crash for now once we get that dialed in. That's probably pretty close. And let's listen to it with bypass. Yeah, so what, I'm gonna copy it and, nope, copy it to the other drum as well. Control and shift, so they have the same settings. So what I want you to notice there is like, they still are communicating that something happened, but on a much more subtle level, right? It, like they're not standing out to your mind that a sample is playing a, a symbol. It's just sort of something is going on there that signifies energy. Um, and so this is how I think you can get really good sounding symbols for production music. Uh, and so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, um, I've used the same track for a series on how to get a really fat sounding snare. So I'll put a link up to that. And I hope you have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've got some good cymbal tips. Later.